This episode will involve a single croc on a step, and a not particularly stationary camera, but not until later on. I'm going to come back to this searchlight mounting to Alan's bow and the dual purpose housing and step I'm making. I wanted to wrap that up today, save for the cosmetic finishing and painting, but that's not a goer and I'll show you why. The housing is upside down here and three vertical sides were part of the original moulding. The fourth I've added in a previous episode. At the moment this is just glued in and needs glass fibre reinforcement as this housing will need to take at least one person's body weight. It's a pretty standard budget composites job Chop strand mat, a type that's compatible with epoxy resin, and a laminating epoxy resin to get the best mechanical bond to the old cured laminate as possible. Some people, usually sponsored by resin companies it seems, say that the polyester resin of the sort used in the original layup bonds just as well, but in my view neither resins are a rip-off. Best to use the best option I have then. The shape involves corners, and I've pre-folded the glass fibre strips to give them the best chance of not bridging and leaving air gaps. Chiefly I use brushes and rollers if afraid of trapped air, but at the final moment before ditching gloves, I like to get in there with fingers to double check there's no give, and to do a final consolidation of the layers. I used a fast hardener so I could carry on work a few hours later. The excess width of the old moulding needs removing, but from the outside there's no indication of where to cut. My solution is to drill a few holes from the inside and then draw a line from hole to hole on the outside as a guide. The size of the housing has been a compromise and will cause a headache later on. The shape of Alan's bow, the range of search I want the light to have, and the space available is what's constraining me. I spent most of the afternoon fending off demands from those two characters in the background from a share of the royalties from the YouTube channel to compensate their non-speaking cameos, but I assured them that all funds were long since allocated to vital items. Grinding discs, storage nets, and Alan's troubling addiction to tangerines and turn-of-the-century Swedish literature. They believed me and wandered off. At long last we ended up with the final housing shape and all's needed is to remove the flat panel at the front, otherwise the searchlight inside will live a frustrating existence. I've started small and stopping before it starts curving off towards the top. I'm planning to glaze with the flat polycarb panel in the end. Then a pretest. I did an estimate before committing to the housing size, but I've made a mistake. The light won't be able to achieve the full 180 range of the swivel, but I never needed all of that. However, even with more modest angles, the light's corners collide with the fiberglass. It's an obstinate sod. Turn, bash, turn, bash. I mould solutions, including side cutouts with a flexi cover, but have gone for a slightly enlarged front port and raising the whole thing up an inch or so. More work for next week, but it's not the disaster I first thought. Novice Allen fans amongst you may have thought I'd be unveiling this episode. You have lots to learn. Let's take a quick look at the electrics link up I'm preparing for the searchlight. It's 12 volts sadly, and my deck supplies the normal boat voltage of 24 volts. So, I'll need to step that down. No great drama, and the current draw for a 50 watt light is exceedingly low. There's no need for a premium buck converter, so this epoxy potted unit will end up inside the housing. Yes, this is upside down. Otherwise I'd have to take the sticker off and reverse it, and life's too short. Beneath the searchlight came with nice easy friction connectors that run to the car charger plug. Simple to unplug, and ready for being wired up into my system. Those large magnets will come in handy too. Right, let's leave that alone for a moment, and go back to the croc. At least one of you was concerned for my survival regarding the main set of hatch to deck steps. They have plenty of anti-slip surface applied, but no edging. I've had no issues so far, but point taken. I've decided to solve the great conundrum of the falling croc. It's not going to be spectacularly complex. I'm going to add some robust angle to the outer edges. This will stop side slippage, but not allow any pooling of water. I've gone with aluminium again, same as the steps, and any galvanic corrosion effect with the small bolts should be minimal. Yes, originality abound. Grinding with cutoff wheels and then a corner finishing with a flap wheel. The drilling, of course, though, was a joy. I've had to do so much drilling of stainless steel that it's nice to carve through swiftly with some nice ribbons of schwarf. You may be wondering how I'm going to install the edges. Ideally, I'd have placed the horizontal beneath the step with enough vertical to do the job. 
The supplier gave me equal angle instead of unequal angle though. And so instead of going through the replacement palaver, I'm going to install it on top so there's enough of a lip. When using a hand drill, and especially with thick pieces of material to make holes in, alignment can be off if you muck up at the start, drill everything, and then attempt assembly. I usually drill the first hole, plonk a bolt through to keep everything in place, and then mark and drill the second, and so on if need be. This saves frustration when slight centering errors of just a millimetre or two can multiply into totally wonky assembly. Anyhow, masterfully, the bolts ended up going through the holes. The washers and nylocks went on by hand as I lack a torque wrench and I don't like the sound of my drill hitting the ratchet. It turns out that I can now still ascend and descend Allen, but with marginally reduced chance of death. Well done whoever suggested it. I filmed a fair bit otherwise this week on some admittedly intense and long days, just at the same time that I'm also preparing a new parallel channel on here, so more soon on all manner of levels. The spring and summer will need more time and investment from my end, both in Allen and otherwise. So naturally, the next destination for you all, apart from re-watching the Allen playlist on repeat, should be my membership page and any location whatsoever that stocks my books on the Arctic. If you have any ideas for additional perks you'd like to see on the membership schemes, stick them below in the comments. You're already there signing up, no doubt, so none of you will hear this. Bye.